welcome to the 500 Doors podcast, where we focus on social responsibility in obtainable and sustainable strategies that we can serve the community and our clients alike. I'm your host, Kim Hayden, an award-winning real estate agent with over two decades of experience. My goal with this show is to simply spotlight industry experts in real estate, buying, selling, planning, developing, investing, management, coaching, plus all those amazing new opportunities that were coming out right now. Understanding real estate is a dream for many that we, real estate professionals and coaches, have the ability to bring that dream to reality while building better communities and being the change we want to see. So I'm really excited, speaking of coaching, speaking of a voice of authority, inspiration and insight, we have a great guest for you today, a gal that I've known actually since 2014. Um, and I, I can promise you one thing, that the smile you see goes all the way through, all the way through. This woman is really a beautiful person inside and out. Now, I am going to ask one favor of you. Please, if you're joining this conversation today, let's take a moment, like, subscribe, comment, and share. So today's guest is Debbie Byrie. Super excited about this. She is the success brand ambassador and certified success coach with over 22 year career in real estate. She has played an active role in the expansion of EXP Realty, including living in an RV while traveling the country in 2015, promoting the company. She is a sought after speaker and serial entrepreneur passionate about encouraging women to get out of their own way. She offers practical how-to steps in her Dear Debbie column in Success Magazine, and her vast experiences span from real estate to leadership development to business building and is woven together by the pursuit of making the world a better place for all. So I want everybody to sit tight while I bring Debbie in. Uh, you're in for an amazing, amazing. This is going to be the best 30 minutes of your week. I promise you. Good morning, Debbie. How are you? Good morning. Hi, everyone. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction and for having me on your podcast. I have been a fan of yours since the day I met you, and I really appreciate being here with you. Oh, uh, you know what? Back at you. Back at you. I, um, you know, we're what? The original 500 at EXP, right? So it's amazing. Uh, oh yeah, it's, 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 it is amazing. And, and I think that you really embody a lot of, you know, what you're working towards bringing forward and love the fact that with success magazine now recognizing your insight that you now even have a vehicle for your voice. But what I'd like to do is before we go into what you're doing currently, I'd love to go into a little bit of who you are, you know, where do you come from? You know, I mean, we look at you and we see, Oh, Debbie must've been a supermodel born into a multi <laughs> multi-billion dollar family and just gets it all handed to her. Is that right, Debbie? Oh my gosh. Yes. How did you know? <laughs> no, far, far, far from that. <laughs> um, so yeah, actually quite the opposite. I was raised by a single mom. Um, I have three older sisters and my mom just worked all the time, worked a ton just to put food on the table. And I was recently talking with someone about this memory that I had of being in the grocery store. And I was so excited because my mom got food stamps and I was running around the grocery store looking at everyone and saying, we're going to get a whole bunch of groceries because my mom got her food stamps today. So I um, had did not have a wealthy up bringing, but I was definitely spoiled with love, uh, thanks to my three older sisters and of course my mom as well. But um, I definitely learned a lot about how to treat other people and um, love and um, being grateful for little things. I think that's something that's really impacted my entire life is just having an ability to be truly grateful for the small things in life. You, you know what? I'm sitting here cracking up because I'm the eldest of four girls <laughs> from a single mom. 
who worked what? two jobs and had to go on food stamps herself because isn't this crazy? I think I'm just going to adopt you as my baby sister. <laughs> Seriously. I love that so much. That's amazing. And so funny that we didn't know that about each oh other. Oh my gosh. You're like the, you're the bookend. You're the other side of every, like, that's what, that's why I absolutely adore you. Okay. So, and you know what? I had an awesome mom too. I have an awesome mom. My mom has always been Kimberly Joe. You know, what she used to say to me, and I, I bet, you know what Debbie uses poverty is a state of mind, not economics, but oh. not stand up and be proud. Right. You know, and my mom Brilliant. was, my mom was amazing. My mom is amazing. And, you know, sometimes I wish I could shake her and make her see how amazing she is because she got four really awesome daughters. Right. I love that. I love that. Okay. So let's dive in. Knowing where your state of mind comes from, knowing that you are used to hard work, you're obviously a creative. That's, you know, probably more so, I'm going to guess when we look at your, you know, your Myers Briggs and all of that, are you more in the creative space or are you more in like the linear space? I'm definitely more creative. <laughs> All righty. So, so in looking at this, that's where the serial entrepreneur in you comes out. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah. um, Definitely. So you, how long have you been on this journey of coaching? Cause this is, a, I've known this about you for, since we met in 2014, that this was a journey that you were embarking on at that time. Walk me through you're a little bit about what you've done. So I want to get a little pre-frame on your real estate career when you're active frontline. And when you started seeing that transition within your life, that there's, that there was a greater calling. Oh, oh, I love this so much. Okay. So I've been in real estate for 22 years and I, I when I first started, I thought to myself, okay, I'm either going to swim or I'm going to swim. I had no, there was no other option. So my very first weekend in real estate, I sat at the kitchen table and I called every single expired listing that I could find. And I called all the for sale by owners that I could find driving around the neighborhood. So I was super, super committed. And then a few years later, I got into my stride and I had a I lived in a really cool neighborhood in Bellingham, Washington called South Hill, and I was able to farm that area. And so I became known as the South Hill Queen, and I had so much fun selling houses and um, just really a beautiful neighborhood and loved meeting people and going through that whole journey of real estate and, you know, all the ups and downs and, you know, writing 10 deals in one week and then having them all fall apart and, than selling the highest priced home in the neighborhood. Um, so I've, I've experienced all those emotions and triumphs and um, things that happen in real estate sales. And I went through a period of my life, um, oh, probably about 10 years ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have all this knowledge and information. And I, I know uh, some strengths and of my personality is that I like to support people, encourage people. And if somebody comes up to me and tells me an idea, I'm going to say, yes, yes, you can. And um, so that's what really got me down the path of looking into being a certified coach and really making a business out of it. And how can I incorporate that into my lifestyle and doing the other projects that I have? So certified coach, walk us through this now, because we hear a lot. It seems like over COVID, everybody became a coach. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but we know that you've been on this path for over a decade, right? You, yeah. you know, um, so you started real estate in what year? 99? 99. 99. Yeah. What, what month? I'm serious. Cause I started oh. in 99 and oh in 2000. 2013 was when everything just started clicking for me that there is a larger audience. Like I'm telling you, like sister from another mother, right? This is crazy. That. Okay. So I want to go into how you got your certification as a coach and then now what you're doing with this and then dive into that 
dear Debbie and how, what your goal is with this next venture. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. I, you know, thinking about COVID and people getting coaching licenses, it, it makes so much sense because this, one of the silver linings of COVID is that so many things came to a stop right? Like a screeching halt and a, yeah. and a big, a big wake up call, like, okay, everybody's life is going to change now. And I, I, it makes so much sense that people are like, okay, how am I going to change my life for the better? And how can I help other people? And how can I start making it a positive change in the world? And of course, I mean, it's, it's usually coaching that everybody goes to because it's such an ex- expansive topic, right? Like there's life coach and business coach and real estate coach, and you can, you can coach here and you can coach when you travel. And there's just so many, so many options and opportunities with coaching. Um, So yeah, that makes so much sense. Um, And and then of course, there's so many different schools for getting a certification in coaching too. So when I first became, um, my first certification is through the IPEC coaching And that was a great experience. And the beauty of going through a coaching program and getting certified is that you end up coaching yourself. That's what hit me like a ton of bricks. When I went through the actual certification, I was like, I'm actually coaching myself and learning these tools and and, um, strategies. And that was super cool. And I loved that. And then now with success, we have success Uh, certified coaching as well. And that's an incredible program. And Jarek Robbins is the president and it's just phenomenal. So we have coaches available for people to get coached and then you can go through the training and have a success certification in coaching as well. I I love the evolution of success. I really do. Um, Because success could have died on the vine and yet it was uh, purchased and revitalized with a new mission and mandate, not to just write articles on people who are successful, but how they got successful and creating infrastructures of learning through those lessons. Cause we all know success leaves clues. And I feel that over the last few years with the evolution and the re uh, the revamp, the, the, re-energization of the brand name and looking at that online learning opportunity. I know that with Web3 and we've just seen the emergence of edx.org, which is the very first Web3 with no barrier of finance education platform that we see Berkeley and Stanford and Oxford. They're all MIT. They're all contributing to this. So if you are in a third world nation, you now can go to edx.org. And if if you have the principles and the structure to self-learn, which is... <laughs> A uh, specialty into itself. Yes, uh, most it is. of us, most of us human beings, need somebody to help drag us along. Um, but I, I love the fact that that success is taking success is what 19, 1903, 1905? When was the first success publication launched? Because I know they have like eight, 1897. 1897. I was eight. close. Yes, very. Yes. 125 year self-development magazine. And you're right about the refresh. We purchased it two years ago, EXP World Holdings. And it has been so exciting because we've been able to revamp it and um, re-energize it. And and the new editor in chief, Cece Meese, Cecilia Meese, she is fantastic. And she just has a pulse on what's happening in the world and very pragmatic and smart and has a big heart. And so she's put together this team of incredible, incredible people. In fact, a couple issues ago, um, oh gosh. Yeah. So two issues ago, the entire issue was created for women by women. And of course that was alongside Courtney Keating. And I mean, it was just, it turned out to be a masterpiece and it's just a very fresh and relevant and energetic magazine yeah Yeah. well and to and to get a a recognized brand like success to take on and 
profile women in business, knowing that our JV, VC, and traditional bank lending, less it was just under 5% collectively went to female founded businesses last year. So that is when we start seeing the shift. When we start getting the 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 brands, the recognized brands, the brands that have have did articles and they on Ford, on the invention of what true iteration in physical form is, right? So yeah. so when we we look at what success can bring, I believe it's now fulfilling what it was maybe the original creators 125 years ago thought it could be right. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I love that. Um, let's, I, I want to dive into um, new agents. We have currently licensed in North America around 3 million agents. Uh, 1.5 are registered with NAR. We have just around 300,000, over 300,000 registered to Korea and Canada. Um, Canada and the United States real estate industry are probably the most closely mirrored out of any real estate uh, practices globally. Now, with that being said, knowing that we have an 87% failure rate of new agents within the first 36 months. And, and by the way, folks, the only <laughs> there are some industries out there with a higher, higher failure rate, but um, it's not easy. Real estate is not easy. Um, what are some of the three, can you give us one, two, or three actionable steps? If somebody's a new agent listening to this program, and maybe they don't have the money to invest in a coach. Maybe they are doing what everybody does and buy fo folks, get away from this as fast as you can, that whole friends and family thing. Oh, they will all want you to do it for free. You're going to go broke if that's your only thing you ever work. What are three things that they can do today that are cost effective? that can help lead to potential results within 90 or 120 days. So it's not magic beans, folks. It takes work. Yes. Real estate takes a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. And I, I you know, we were talking about that before we went live about how so many real estate agents sign up and the failure to be an agent and the failure rate is so high. And I think a big reason why is because Real estate is challenging and it's difficult and you come up against roadblocks all the time and you fall down and you have to get back up and keep going. And there's just so much to building a real estate career. However, if you have that in mind and know, hey, I can do this, then you can do it. But you have to be ready to be knocked down and go, OK, that's OK, because that's part of building a successful career. So um, one thing that I love to do, I didn't have a lot of money when I started my real estate career. And something that worked really well for me was open houses and because open houses are so easy to do. And that's where the people are. You're meeting people. People are coming in, you're interacting with the neighbors, you're interacting with the sellers, you're interacting with other agents. And that's a fantastic way to build your network list. And number two, I would say, get really clear, as clear as you can on what your strengths are and what you're really excited to do. And then forget all the other things because there's a hundred things you can do or a thousand things you can do to market and network and build a business and do this and do that. Just pick two or three or one and forget everything else and just make that one thing open houses. For example, your, your, become the best at that uh, that you can be. And that was something that I did. I was like, I'm a people person. I love to be around people. I love meeting people. I love hosting the party, the, the open house party. So I would get really creative with it. I would have my son, Jeffrey, come in and bake cookies during the open house. I would have breakfast open houses. I would have sunset open houses. I would just, you know, I would hire a student from the college to come play music at the open house. So you can turn it into something really interesting and fun and engaging. So really find what works for you and be, stay in alignment with what fits your personality and what fits your strengths and really own that and excel at that. And that that will take you far. Absolutely. Um, I think really knowing who you are is critical. And I, and as we go through 
the ebbs and flows and we the ups and the downs that that is when when our metal gets tested right that is yeah. when we find out who we are um i love the saying when you speak to everyone you speak to no one and Ooh. i think this is really really like very that. important is that know your market had a great conversation with a guy who uh, he was uh, a valedictorian. He is a poet. He actually coaches youth, mentors youth to find their path while working with the parents to understand their youth. This is wow. a guy that is twenty or thirty thousand dollars just to engage, but he wants to get broader. And he goes, and I said, "Well, who's your who's your audience?" He goes, "Well, pretty much everybody." And I said, "No." No, know, know your audience. And I think that's what you said. So understanding your communities. When you when you talk about your community farming, can you um, break down for especially new agents? Farming is not a term that is being taught to new agents these days. Can you break down what farming in real estate looks like to you? Yes. And I love farming and, and I'll call that my number three, my number three tip, because farming you can do without spending a lot of money. I mean, if you don't have clients, what do you have? You have time and you have energy. So a farm is taking a particular neighborhood and being very consistent with your communication. So you get you take the um, sales, the recent sales in the neighborhood and the recent listings in the neighborhood and you go door to door and you drop off the information and say, hey, just wanted to let you know what's going on in the neighborhood. Like people love to get updates. You can also do like a community event. There's all kinds of things you can do around farming. So Google farming a neighborhood in real estate because it is really never ending, but it's a really great way to niche market. And for example, I lived in South Hill and I loved the neighborhood and the old homes. And so that was my farm. And I would send out a newsletter um, once a month. I would send out a newsletter and I would do other things that like you can do coloring contests for kids. You can uh, let's see what else you could offer dog walking. I don't know, but <laughs> it, finding ways to really engage with people and inter introduce yourself and let them see who you are. And that is something that, that they talk about when you're going to build a farm is, you know, do it in your neighborhood, do it in your own neighborhood. If, if you, if you can, it's a great place to start and you get practice talking with people and practice answering questions. And you could even do um, a Facebook group for your community. And then you, that's where you could post, updates on new listings or pendings and sales. And I mean, Facebook group, that's, that's free. Absolutely. Um, and there are so many online courses on how to effectively grow a Facebook group. And if there's a great Facebook group in your community that wasn't created by a real estate agent, <laughs> reach out to them and say, Hey, I'm looking at doing a community event. And I would love to partner with you on this. And may I be a part of your it be recognized as an industry expert on occasion when how many times don't be afraid to ask and collaborate oh local i love businesses. that yeah love local that. businesses oh local absolutely businesses. huge huge absolutely that's a yeah. great one that's a great one absolutely so you know uh open houses uh get an opportunity get in front of people um, what, what, what was your favorite thing to do in an open house that you believed set your open house separate from others? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. What did I, let me see. Let me see. I had a really cool, you know, I, it's, it's kind of simple, but I thought it was super cool. I loved the, um, idea of the student coming and playing music. I think that just sets a tone and is like yep. really different and unexpected. And the student gets to practice and you're offering something that's just more of an experience than, hey, come check out this house. It's like, no, enjoy the ambiance. And so I, I think that was cool. I think that's a cool thing. Absolutely. And that taps into uh, human beings' senses. So sight, sound, scent, right? Touch, taste, right? We have yeah. these. And, and when we can 
um, there was a study done by, I want to say Harvard, um, and it was a study for commercial engagement and ticket sales. And that, that what it was is that what they, they layered the senses. So the first thing they did is they would put the one thing that they wanted to see if they could sell the highest ticket item. And it was like, I think it was like a dish, right? But they put the, the cheaper ones above eye line and below eye line. And they had like a bump of like 14%. And then they layered in uh, music. Oh. And then they layered in a scent. And when they layered in a uh, uh, like a, a vanilla soft scents, not hard senses, yeah. they actually, they saw their tickets go up like upwards of 60% engagement on that item. Because they got music, and this is what most people don't know, music actually, if a song takes three minutes to play, the average song's two and a half minutes on average, people, when, they are, when their auditory gets engaged, they actually, their time shrinks. So they will actually spend longer in a single space if accompanied by music. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, this is, I am such a geek when it comes to trying to figure out the neuroscience, the psychology behind why does a podcast work? Why podcast? Why are people engaging in the audio engagement of podcasts? Why is it the fastest growing uh, platform out there? And it's because it actually, people will listen to podcasts, be it, you know, a crime mystery or a motivational whatever but they listen to what engages them so if they're sitting there doing something boring at work they can just crank out that work right you know if you're in a file system somewhere they're listening to podcasts it is crazy so audio is really important folks audio uh, i love having that engaging people's uh uh audible sensory intake to soothe them um within the open houses. And then you said bake cookies. I love, I used to do that all the time. I, I, I love my cookies. My, my, my clients are like, bake extras. And my kids are like, bring home the extras. Yes, so, it's like, yes. <laughs> so, all righty. So folks, if you're enjoying this conversation, we're going to jump into the second half. And this is kind of a rapid round. Are you ready, Debbie? Yes. Okay. So if you're liking this, be sure that you do what folks, I want you to go like, subscribe, comment, and share. So Debbie, Let's talk about community. This is my word, community, collaboration, resilience. These are my words that I live my life by. Um, I would love to know your definition of community and why. Ooh, well, and I, I do want to just confirm that and affirm that. Yes, Kim, you are, you are like the community builder extraordinaire. So yes, you've set the, set the example, set the stage. It's really impressive and amazing everything that you've done around community and you're always involving people and inviting people and you just have that ability to connect people and make people feel good. And so that's a gift. That's a gift. Thank you. I will yeah. take that. I will take that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Yeah. Um, so community, I that how would I define community? I the first words that pop into my mind are support, supporting one another and allowing space for people to express themselves and really remembering that we are all different and we all come from different places and we all have different ideas. And that's a beautiful part of the human experience that we're all having is that we can all be different. And then when we come together and share ideas and create that win-win and support each other and encourage each other, I feel like that's, that's, that's a good definition for a community. And why is that important to you? Why is community important to you? Community is important because if we didn't have community, we would be miserable. Like we have to have community. It's, it's actually, it's, it's proven by science actually too. It's proven by science that we need other people in our lives and deep connections so that we will live longer. And it's imperative to have relationships. It's the way our brains are wired. It's the way our human forms want to engage with one another. Like we, we, if we want to go fast, we go alone. If we want to go far, we go together. And it's, it's just, 
being part of a community is something that helps us feel good. It's very simple. It's just feeling good. And when we feel good and we feel like we're part of something, then we have freedom to go and do the things that we want to do because we know we've got our community back here in our corner cheering us on and vice versa. Vice versa. Absolutely. I, I couldn't be more aligned with your your why. I absolutely agree with you. Um, what is a book that you think we should all read? <gasps> oh, I love books. I have so many good books. Okay. Um, you can give us three then because I know you've got like all of you. You give us three. Give me three I, books that we should go out and get today. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, okay. So Atomic Habits. James Clear. Love James that Clear. one. It's brilliant. And it's so simple. And it's, you know, I think so many people, if not everyone has some kind of something that they're struggling with, and then we overcomplicate it and overthink it. And it's like that book just breaks things down in such a simple form. It's like, okay, I can, I can do one thing. I can do one, two, and three. Super simple. Um, five, four, three, two, one by Mel Robbins. Oh my gosh. My goal, my <sighs> goal, and it may take me a decade to get there, but my goal, even if I only get five minutes on stage with her and I'm putting that out there with everybody, my Same. goal is I'm to, with you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I think Debbie and I will be talking later on how to build the stage so we can be with Mel Robbins. <laughs> yes. There, I love her so much. I just, her 54321 concept has changed my life since I first read the book. Like, I don't know when that was in 2018, maybe 2017, yeah. whenever it was changed my life again, simple, everything's simple, but it's like, Oh, a new way of thinking about something and then practicing it. 54321. Oh, um, amazing and brilliant. And let's see another book. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm an, I'm a book nerd. I have tons of books. But one that I just recently read, too, is Everything is Figure Outable by Marie yes. Forleo. I yep. love that book. I just love how optimistic and can-do attitude. And it's like, hey, everything is figure outable. And, and she just has some really great stories in it and some exercises. And it's it's just fun and smart. So that's a good read, too. Oh, you know what, Debbie? <laughs> I think I think you could be even my twin. I just I I love That's everything. What I was thinking. <laughs> I'm just like going. You are amazing. You are amazing. Um, right back at you. So you know, I hope everybody has thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I know I have. So I'm going to be a little bit jealous or a little bit selfish here. Even if nobody else had a good time, I had a great time. So um, where can we connect with you? Uh, Debbie, where can we follow you? Where can, can we send questions in for your new Dear Debbie column? Can you go over that a little bit? How do we engage with you? Oh, absolutely. Thank you for asking. De uh, DebbieByrie.com is my website, and I am developing some new branding and programs that are coming in a few months down the road, but all my information is there. And if you have questions, please write in to DearDebbie at success.com. We want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. And I, I love the, the interaction. You can message me. You can t tag me on Instagram. Reach out anytime. Awesome. Awesome. All right, folks. So this is where we're going to wrap it all up. And we're going to leave a quote, a piece of wisdom stuck in your head for the rest of the day. Debbie, can you share with us a quote that inspires you? <laughs> I, I have a favorite quote and I actually, I've had, I put it on my Facebook. You can put like a quote or something under your name and it's been there since I put it there. Oh my gosh, maybe 12 years ago. And someone, a client of mine, I was selling her house and she was a professor and super smart. And she said this to me and I, I don't know where she got it. I think I'm sure everyone's heard it before, but I love it. You are your own fortune cookie. Oh, that's awesome. So what that, that means is write your own fortune already. Write it down and put it in your cookie. <laughs> that, but seriously, 
exactly. Like we're responsible for what we make and create. So that's what I love. You are your own fortune cookie. Well, and Belgeet, who is an agent here in Canada, she is, uh, she just said how much she loves all three of those books. So those are, she's read them all. So obviously oh, you got oh, a good reading li list there. And um, you know what, folks? That's it for us today here at the 500 Doors Podcast, because we believe behind every door is an opportunity, an opportunity for you to serve and be the change you want to see. So again, I encourage you all, please support the show. It is as simple as liking, subscribing, comment, and share. And reach out through our Facebook group, Real Estate Success with 500 Doors. I'm your host, Kim Hayden, and thank you again for sharing your most valuable resource, your time.